Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, and uh, we're set for our first major conversation. On March 18, Nigerians came out in their numbers to vote for uh, the preferred governorship candidates across different political parties. In 28 states of the Federation, results from the election uh, are now being announced, of course, by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Um, some states are inconclusive. Results are expected from other states. But in many states, uh, the dynamics changed after the presidential election, with political parties clinging to their victories after losing to the opposition uh, during uh, the 25th February, uh, 25, 25th February uh, presidential election. In Lagos, the All Progressives Congress had lost to the Labour Party uh, during the presidential poll, but things changed during the governorship elections held on Saturday. APC's Babajide Somolu uh, had or has been declared the winner, while the candidate of Labour Party, Badebo Rhodes Vivo, came a distant second. Uh, the LP's candidate alleged, of course, the election was rigged and there were many reported cases of violence and voter suppression during the election. The results uh, so far declared as of 10 p.m. last night indicated uh, that the All Progressives Congress uh, polled, uh, won the governorship poll in, polls in 15 states, including Sakoto, Katsina, Jigawa, Gombe, uh, Lagos State, uh, Kwara State, Niger State, Yobe State, uh, Nasarawa State, Cross River State, Ebonyi State, Benue State, Kaduna State, and Bonu State. The People's Democratic Party, on the other hand, had won in Plateau State, uh, Bauchi State, Oyo State, uh, Delta State, River State, and Akwaibom States, while the new Nigeria People's Party emerged victorious for the first time uh, in Kanu State. The results of election in Abia State and Indugi States were delayed uh, following the dispute between the Labour Party and the PDP of our results in some local government areas. There are also some situations that we are monitoring in Adamawa State and Kebi State. I'm um, glad to say joining us this morning is uh, Bjorn Shomi, who is a public affairs analyst, as we continue our coverage and, uh, of course, analysis of the governorship elections. Bjorn Shomi, thank you very much for your time and good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, along the line, we expect to be joined by uh, the chairman, vice chairman, South South uh, of the Labour Party, Prince Fever Rubin. Uh, but Bjorn Shomi, in, in a, a sentence or two, please describe your opinion, uh, your analysis, your assessment of the governorship election and the House of Assembly elections held on Saturday, March 18. Um, yes, um, the governorship elections um, held in Lagos um, were driven by different um, sub-teams um, which surfaced. Um, it was partly religion-driven just like in the presidential election, partly driven by ethnic or some other primordial considerations, um, no doubt about that. Um, the tensions became so heightened that uh, there were an atmosphere, some people alleged that they felt um, apprehensive. And because of that, they decided to stay at home or not to vote. Um, we also have some incidents in some areas in the states. You know, there are reported incidents of um, um, voters' intimidation or thuggery. Um, this happened um, in the states. But by and large, and generally, um, in many areas in Lagos, the elections went on smoothly. Um, I would uh, want to cite examples of Badagri. It was very smooth. In Epe, it was smooth. Uh, you could do better, and some parts of Lagos, because I also observed the elections um, as an accredited observer. Um, in um, Agege, it was smooth. Uh, Surule, there was a problem. Um, Ijora, no problem, but there was a problem in, um, in um, um, uh, Agor, Okota area, uh, problem in Aguda. Uh, that was, uh, no, I, I was told of the problem in Oshodi, but I never got there. There was no problem in Mushi and some other areas. So when you take into account the percentage of the population and the areas affected, generally speaking, if you're talking about legal states, generally speaking, then one would say the election substantially comply with the electoral laws. But that does not mean that there were no 
um, incidents or issues in some parts of Lagos. Okay, let's look at the fact that um, some some governorship candidates, uh, some candidates who are anointed by incumbent governors um, didn't win. Um, uh, the power of incumbency is very strong and a determining factor in most elections, state elections especially. Uh, we have the governorship elections and the House of Assembly elections. But we're seeing, in, uh, for instance, um, in, uh, in Kanu State, the anointed candidate of uh, Governor Ganduje, Omar Ganduje, didn't win. Rather, the NMPP uh, is in power for the first time in Kanu State. In, in Tatsu State, Simon Lalong's anointed candidate didn't win. Uh, the People's Democratic Party won that election. And in, in Benue State, the case is also different as well. The incumbent governor, Samuel Otom of the G5 fame, um, uh, had his uh, candidate defeated. And uh, of course, so we know that the uh, Reverend Father or the SOR Reverend Father won. Um, what do you think accounts for this, this, this trend in, in some of these states that the candidates of the anointed incumbent governors, these are strong governors, powerful governors, you know, the likes of Gandhu J. Otom and uh, Lalong, that the anointed candidates lost out in the governorship election. Quite a surprise to some. Yes, we are beginning to see the impact of uh, new technology. Um, the beavers introduced for accreditation purposes by INEC made a major difference. Um, in the past, what politicians used to do, uh, particularly um, sitting governors, is to use incident form to breach uh, the gap. What they simply do is they look at the number of total registered voters. If the total number of registered voters is uh, 10,000 and only 6,000 voted. So they help people by filling the blank form in collusion with INEC uh, officials uh, and then get the num necessary numbers they want as long as it's below the 10,000. But what Beavers has done is that it's not about total number of registered voters. It is about the accredited voters, people who actually turn up for accreditation and the number of vote cast must not exceed them. So that narrowed the gap for any manipulation and it minimized it drastically. So we are beginning to see the results of the people. If people were allowed to vote, um, uh, counting. In the case of um, Benue State, it's totally a different case completely. The governor tried to play on the, um, on the fears and anxiety of the people over the, um, the, the, the hearts uh, problem, the hardest problem. Um, it successfully did that for some time, but forgot the fact that he did not pay people's salary. He was owing them up to six months salary. So um, we've seen the results manifesting in the fact that they rejected his um, candidate and voted for a more popular uh, Catholic father, Alea. Um, in the case of um, uh, in the case of um, uh, other states uh, like um, Oshun, no, or your states. Or your state's case is totally different. Marking day, there seems to be a kind of um, marking day being rewarded for uh, is the stance he took in presidential election. So there is a kind of groundswell opinion, you know, in within the uh, political parties, particularly the APC and the Accord, that they had to let him come back. Um, that's what accounted for that, and even the opponent has respected that by congratulating him. In other cases, too, we've seen even sitting governors, you know, losing uh, tickets, not being able to go to Senate. They used to use Senate as their retirement tools. Uh, people are beginning to reject that. It's simply because the beavers made a difference. People's votes are counting. That is where people are not frightened or, or, or threatened or if they're able to cast their vote, it's not beginning to count. All right, thank you very much. We have uh, uh, Prince Favor Ruben on the line. Uh, Prince Ruben, thank you very much for your time and good morning to you. Good morning, Prince Favor Ruben. All right, uh, while we try to get back to Prince Favor Ruben, let's uh, continue with our conversation. Be able to show me public affairs analyst is still with us um, and, of course, giving us his analysis. Um, uh, be able to show me interesting uh, uh, analysis from Oyo State. Um, the role that uh, uh, um, 
uh, Governor Markin they played, even though he was of the PDP. But in probably f taking the stance of the G5, with his uh, help nobody with Wiki, um, to say that, hey, we're going to support a candidate from the South. And, um, uh, and that is what's, what, what played in his favor. You talked about uh, support from the APC and even Accord Party. Uh, which is a strong party. That's, that's quite interesting. Um, what about the situation in in Adamawa State? What are your thoughts on that? Because you know people felt uh, Benini uh, was going to emerge as the governor of Adamawa State until we began to see something different. And those who were saying, "Hey, hold on a minute, wait till Lina can announce his results," actually uh, won the argument. Well, what are your thoughts on what's been playing out in Adamawa State so far? Where you know uh, certain results were brought by the uh, the coalition officers, but the INEC returning officer said, no, we cannot take the results because they are manual. We would go for what is in the beavers. And that led to what we are seeing right now where um, the Adama result was, you know, put on hold uh, uh, for the meantime. Yes, Adama would um, be a highly contested one. Um, one Sorry, uh, Bjorn Shomi, can you hear me, please? You, you, your line sounds faint. I do not know if you're... You, you can get to get closer to your phone. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, it's better. Please go on. Okay. Adamawa uh, will remain a highly contested one. Reason because you have a governor, sitting governor, who wants to come back. Number two is the home state of the presidential candidate of the PDP in the last election, Alaji Atikua Abubakar. And um, it, is, it will be very, very humbling after losing the presidential election to again now lose um, Adamawa State um, in, in the view of the politicians. But you have a very popular grassroots candidate. She's not the first person. We've had Madame Taraba. Now we have uh, Binani. And this woman has been a very, a very strong, group, strong grassroots politician. Loved by the people. Um, unfortunately, she's faced with a formidable opponent in the sense that um, the governor um, is determined to come back. Um, they've done the elections, remaining only one area, which is Furore. In Furore, um, they were expecting the results to come in yesterday, but the result that came in uh, was um, fantastic. And they were not backed up by the accreditation. And given the fact that the number of cancelled polls in different units, you know, the total number of that, you know, are even more than the, the margin of victory if they were to accept the Ferrari polls. Uh, the INEC had no choice but to, um, um, to actually uh, agree to cancel it and then, you know, rescheduled um, new polls. And that is exactly what would happen. There will be new elections in areas where they are cancelled. So all hope is not lost. We may end up having the first female governor um, because there would not be more security men to police those areas since uh, the whole Vienna election has come to an end, um, largely. So, but that is basically uh, the issue in Adamawa. It's, you know, you have a very sit a sitting governor who has a lot to show also. Um, for his own performance in office. So he's always going to be highly contested like that and that. Okay, um, I'm glad to say we have uh, Prince Favor Ruben on the line. Uh, Prince Favor Ruben, can you hear me, please? Good morning. Uh, Prince Favor Ruben, please, can you hear me? All right, we apologize for that. We'll just uh, move on uh, uh, from that. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts, um, uh, Pierre Shomi, of this rejection initially by the uh, the state uh, returning officer for INEC in, or the resident electoral commissioner, rather, of, of, of the manually collated results, and he said that they were going to rely rather on the IRF results because there was a disparity. Um, do you think that is something that probably should have been uh, told, a line that should have been told by INEC all this while, right from the presidential elections, you know, to this particular governorship election? Results um, collated at the polling unit um, should be different from the one um, uh, uh, on the higher uh, because the results in the IRF 
is expected to be the ones from the polling unit. If we have a difference in that, then there is a problem somewhere. Um, what we have to remember is that the IRF is just a viewing portal. The real declaration of results happen at the polling unit, taken to the local government, what unit to local government, and then to the state level for final declaration by the returning officer. So whatever is, dif if there's any difference in what is in on the INEC portal and what people have with them, that will be a subject of litigation. Of course, that would be wrong. Uh, it's not expected to happen. There could have been a, an error on the part of staff uploading, or it shouldn't be different. And this is kind of um, error that INEC needs to watch out for. Um, when you, we, yes, people will give them room that there will be a margin of error when you are trying a new technology for the first time. But election is too important and too sensitive um, to have them um, two different results you know, for the same polling unit. So I think our next still has a lot to do um, and also a lot of explanations to make um, in election petitions tribunal to explain why they had those differences. Okay. Um, uh, uh, the, what, what, do you, what about the fact that the, <laughs> the regulations and guidelines for the count of elections as released by INF, these are guidelines that are for any elections in Nigeria. Until they come up with new guidelines, say that they should take the result that uh, was uploaded uh, el electronically over the one that was presented manually? Uh, yes. Um, if there's a the problem we have is the fact that there are two court judgments on this very particular matter on transfer of results or transmission, whichever way we want to call them. Um, there is a judgment by the Federal High Court, High Court of, in Abuja saying that um, INEC has a right to prescribe the mode of transfer, that is, they can choose uh, uh, transmission and then change their mind, you know, to manual. Then there's another judgment, which I'm now aware of, you know, granted by Justice Lifu of the Federal Court, Ikoi, um, saying that INEC, in respect to Lagos, INEC should um, transfer the results um, electronically. Um, that's for the governorship election. So these are two judgments we need until this case is um, sorted out at an appellate level, it then becomes impossible for anybody to say uh, whether INEC is wrong, uh, was wrong uh, to have allowed the manual transmission of results or right, uh, because the, both federal courts are courts of equal, you know, coordinate um, jurisdiction. So we need an appellate ruling on, on, on that very matter. That's my own view, you know, to stay within the law. Okay, um, I, I want to read um, a section of the, uh, the regulations and conduct of the uh, regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections uh, to you. Um, okay, I, I do not have, have, I think this is the, the exact, but it says where the INEC had copy of collected results for the immediate lower level of collation does not exist, the collation officer shall use electronically transmitted results or results from the IRF portal uh, to continue collation. Um, so so it's, 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 it's clear from what this law says that um, you can use the results from the IRF portal to, to collate. Mr. Show me. Yes, correct. I've never... I you, 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 you were questioning, you said the IRF uh, portal is just for viewing, but um, this is this section 93 of the guidelines and uh, con uh, con uh, conditions for the conduct of elections uh, in Nigeria. So, so uh, what do you say about this? Because it says you can use the IRF but, portal. Yeah. Yes. Note, note the absence of one legal word there. There is no shall. Shall. So, if you have, it's not, it's not obligatory. They may choose not even to use that as a source of information. That's the problem, you know, because the original raw source material, you know, it's the from EC8, EC, EC, EC8, I think, EC8C, which was signed at the polling unit level. EC8A, that is the same result. yeah. EC8C, that should be the same result on the IREF portal. In a situation where you have the, what is on from EC8A, 
different from what is on the IREF portal, there is no way they can use the one on IREF portal because it's from EC8A that is authentic. That's the source material that has been uploaded. So, in my view, that is why it, 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 it is not mandatory, it is not obligatory that INEC must use it, the information on the VIM portal, you know, for uh, the purpose of um, uh, determining that. And it's the job of a returning officer, you know, to do that. He may choose to, to use it or not to use it. It's not obligatory on his part. That is the point I'm trying to make, sir. Okay, uh, Mr. Shomi, actually, uh, Section 93 of the Regulations and Guidelines for the Conduct of Elections 2022 actually says um, that you shall. And even Section 94 also says that you shall. Uh, yes, shall do. No, no, Section 90, uh, 93. Um, uh, okay, so, so it says that uh, where the INEC had copy of collated results from the immediate lower level of the collation does not exist, the collation officer shall shall use electronically transmitted results or results from the IRF portal to continue the collation. So it's, there's no may there, it's shall, that you, yeah, you can use the IRF. The IRF port portal is available to be used for collation because it, it is simply a picture of the form EC8, the same form EC8A. So I do not know what the fear is. I mean, if it's it, the it's same still, thing. It's still the same thing. Yeah, so you why? Know, why, why the, and he says shall, which is, you know, that's what he says. You shall use it. Uh, just to correct Th That it. is what I'm saying. It's not mandatory that they shall use the IRF portal. There's still, you know, a, 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 a other forms of um, verification. And a returning officer can choose not to use the IRF portal for his own verification, given the fact that the the source of the, 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 the material uploaded on the IREF is actually the form ECHA. If I have that with me, why then do I need to use another portal? It's not obligatory that that is the only means that they must use. That's the point I'm trying to make. I don't know whether... But, but Mr. Shomi, is it, is it not the form ECHA that is on the IREF portal? Well, you gave me an example um, earlier on where uh, there's... <laughs> What's on the RF portal is different from, from ECHA. So you can have a situation, you know, we are dealing with politicians. You can have a situation where the form ECHA could be mutilated deliberately, you know, for uh, political ends or for mischievous ends. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you then have a different um, um, result on the on the IREF. Let me give you a good example. The example given by Dino Melai on AKT, that the information he had with him on the form ECHA, you know, uh, stated that there was overvoting. And the uh, returning officer, who is the ch ch chairman of INEC, uh, actually said, looked at the papers and said the ones with him did not show overvoting. He showed, you know, under undervoting. So you can have a situation where people can deliberately or mischievously wanting to score a point, you know, alter those information. But the bottom line is whatever information on the from ECHA is not only given to all the agents of political parties, but also given to the to, to the security officer in charge of that polling area. Maybe in this case, the, the commissioner of police. So therefore, uh, when it comes to litigation, so many other issues you know, will crop up, and the court will be able to determine what is right from what is wrong. Um, it does not mean that either quarter cannot even be hijacked or hacked, you know, to, to change the information on the system. We are using this technology, so it will have its own challenges, and the court will resolve this within a short possible, the shortest possible time of 180 days. So, so when, when, when there's a discrepancy or disparity, sorry, between... Uh, the results on the as the result she captured uh, on, on the IRF portal. That's the one they snapped the result sheet at the polling unit, and then the one that was uh, the results that have been uh, announced or brought to the collation center by the local government returning officer, for instance. Where is that disparity? Because we've seen results being changed with pen. You know. Yes. Yeah. It's just simple. You just put a zero in front of someone's result and then cancel one number at the end. When then add a, a two in front of some result, it becomes 200 and something. And um, when you have that disparity where the 
the uh, the the result on the IRF portal is showing something different. Which one should be taken? Well, um, the results submitted by the INEC returning officer um, will be the one INEC will go with. If that result differs with the one with the political parties, of course the party agents are expected to challenge it. And then the returning officer will have to determine what to believe. If he chooses to ignore the ones pro pro uh, provided by the political party agents, is required in writing to state, um, to, to, to state that there was objection and he overruled it. Um, is required to do that. But if he chooses to accept the objection, then that becomes final on that part. The only thing anybody can do is after the declaration of results, you know, we have seven days in which to make further representation to INEC to review the decision taken by the returning officer. Otherwise, we go to the tribunal. That's the process. So everything depends on the returning officer. Okay. Whatever it says, there is final at okay. the polling unit level. All right. Uh, Mr. Chomi, I think uh, Section 93 of the guidelines, regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections in Nigeria 2022 uh, um, really resolve the, the controversy, what you said about whether the IREC portal, IREV uh, portal can be used to collate results. It says it can. That one is, is settled. But Section 51 of the regulations and guidelines uh, gives us the answer to, to whether, and I want your thoughts on this, uh, whether the, uh, if there's a discrepancy or disparity, um, there's a difference between what is, is placed on the front of the coalition officer uh, paper, EC8A, versus what is online. The moment any party raises an objection, there is a dispute mechanism procedure that INEC itself put in place. And this is contained in section uh, 51 of the uh, regulations and guidelines for the conduct of election. It says, where there is any discrepancy in any result submitted by a presiding officer to the RA or ward coalition officers verified from the result transmitted or transferred directly to, from the polling unit, the RA officer or ward coalition officer shall, I, request explanation from the presiding mm -hmm. officer or officers concerned about the circumstances of the discrepancy. I, I locate the point of this disc of discrepancy, resolve the discrepancy using the electronic result, and request the presiding officer to endorse the resolution. That is what it says. And the last one, I make a report of the discrepancy. So it says you resolve it using the electronic result. It is in black and white, Mayor Shomi. It is clear. You know, unambiguous. Don't, wouldn't you say, sir? If you need, you really need to go back and read it properly. There are two stages of um, collation. The first stage is in relation to all elections from um, National Assembly up to state level. The, the collation point, you know, it's at the level of um, the state. It is only the presidential election that the coalition point is at the level of um, um, is what is done in Abuja. Now, if there is a dispute, the, the, the electoral rules are very, very clear. Me. The steps to be taken, if you read um, electoral act section from section 60, is very clear. If anybody has any objection on any voting material, uh, ballot paper or water plea, you state that to the presiding officer. And the presiding officer uh, can choose to reject your own um, objection. But then the returning officer has the final say. It is only the returning officer that has the final say because he's the only one that can declare the results if he's satisfied. Of course, he's bound to ask the presiding officer, you know, to explain why he's disagreeing, you know, with, with what the party agent you know, observed, and he will state his own case. If the returning officer agrees with the presiding officer, then that's the end. He, he, that's final. He will now make a pronouncement to say that, uh, well, um, he's accepting the result. And once he's done that, you can only, you know, go back within seven days to INEC, you know, for make further representation or go to the elections petitions tribunal. 
That is all what one can do in relation to that. Whether it chooses to use a very important like IRA, uh, you know, to uh, make up his mind, to determine the, the objection or not, um, is not uh, the issue. If he chooses not to use IRA, you know, to determine, uh, there's nothing we can do because it's not mandatory for him to use the IRF, you know, as the only source of determining uh, or resolving these books in, okay. um, uh, in, in, in uh, or complaints made by Th thank you, Mr. Show me. That's the point. Yeah, but Mr. Show me, um, uh, Section 60 of the Electoral Act uh, doesn't talk about the resolve uh, conflict resolution mechanism. It, it, if in anything, it talks about the procedure of announcing results, counting results, signing the results sheet, and also the penalty for those uh, officials who contravene any section of the Electoral Act uh, or who intentionally, um, you know, um, scuttle an election, you go to prison, you know, which is what some of these ANEC uh, officials, if the things are done right, should, they should be cooling their heels in prison um, because some of them have deliberately changed the results. Mr. Show me, some of them have gone ahead to, to do what the, the, the Electoral Act says they shouldn't do, but we'll leave that for another day. Um, Section 60 doesn't... It doesn't but I will agree with you yeah. that they should go to prison. Those yeah. who have committed offenses. Yeah, but, but so show me, I'm, I'm just about to ask my question. You see, we don't live in a banana republic where, you know, because you are uh, an INEC official, you can do what you want. You actually can't do what you want. Even the president, uh, even the INEC chairman cannot do what he wants. There are laws. You can't just say because I'm the... Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So the law is clear. I think what you are referring to is found not in Section 60 of the Electoral Act, but in Section 51 and Section 93 of the Regulations and Guidelines for the Conduct of Elections. Now, Section 91 no, makes it no, clear. No, 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 I'm coming, sir. Can I no, learn? Can I learn, no. please? Can I learn, Mr. Shelby? Please, please. I, 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 I appeal to you. Section 93 clearly states, and I'm going to read it again, that the IRF can be used as a means for... Uh, uh, determining the result of, of, of an election. Moreover, the IRF is not only the only means. You have electronically transferred or transmitted results, which also are there. So these can be used. Otherwise, why are they transmitted? Why would the results be electronically transmitted? We can even leave the IRF and talk about the results as electronically transmitted. And it said, but it says in section 93, I read it before, um, that where the INEC had copy of collated results from the immediate lower level of collation does not exist, the collation officer shall use electronically transmitted results, which is what we said, which is the first thing the Electoral Act talked about when it says INEC should transfer the results in a manner they deem necessary. The guidelines now say they're going to, first of all, uh, trans transmit or transfer the results electronically. Then secondly, upload the results on IRF portal, which is the second thing a lot of Nigerians get confused about. So section 93 says that the coalition officer shall use, shall, sir, use electronically transmitted results or the results from IRF portal to continue coalition. So they can, they can be used for coalition. That is not in doubt. That is sorted out. But section 51, sir, is clear. It says that where there is a discrepancy, I'm going to read it already for you, sir, the first time. Uh, I'll just take it again if for, for emphasis sake. It says where there is any, any discrepancy in a result submitted by a presiding officer to the RA or World Coalition Officer as verified from the result transmitted or transferred directly from the polling unit, it says the Coalition Officer shall, I, Request explanations from the presiding officers concerned about the circumstances of the discrepancy. I, I, sir, locate the point of discrepancy, resolve this discrepancy using the electronic result and request the presiding officer to endorse the resolution. So it's clear. No. If there's a discrepancy, you, you uh, use the electronic uh, result. Would you allow me to Yes, please, yes, yes, please, by all means. Well, what seems very clear to me is you still do not, either I am a bad communicator or I'm not, you know, um, making the point clear. The issue in contention is this, in my view, is IREF portal the only means mandated by law to resolve 
this quote. I'm rephrasing it in my own words, maybe because it's more convenient for me to do that. In my view, and what I'm saying is, it is not the only one. It is not mandatory in law that that is the only instrument to be used to resolve this quote. And when you go by the two sections you read, he's saying it can. No, sir. No, no, you. no, sir. No, sir. Mr. Show me, please. That is not what he says. I have a copy. I don't know if you have a copy. I have a copy of both uh, laws. He doesn't say it can. Mr. Show me, he says shall. You need to read it again. If there is a conditional, it's a conditional. No, sir. Statement. No, sir. No, sir. Mr. Show me. No, no, you no, no sir. Mr. Show, show me. No, please, please. Let's not misinform our public. It doesn't say if. The first thing you said, no, sir, it doesn't say if. No, no, I didn't read if. Maybe you are, you are deliberately not hearing what I'm saying. It says where. Where there is any discrepancy, the coalition officer shall. But you've consistently said it doesn't say shall. Please. It says shall. I think we should, we owe a duty to Nigerians at least to, to read the law correctly. And that's what I'm attempting to do, to read the law correctly. You also said the IRA portal can never, cannot be used for collation results. And I read it to you out there. They said you shall. You can use it. Kofi, sir, Kofi sir. please, at the end of this program, you need to go back and listen to what you read. And I'm sure the viewers heard you when you said, if there is a show me, it's here. I said, where? Okay. Where? No. I said, where there is. I'm re okay, if I said, if I'm correcting myself. Where there is any discrepancy, anywhere, the preside collation officer shall, I, I, locate the point of discrepancy, resolve the discrepancy using electronic result. I said where, not if. And what difference does it make? But I said where. Mr. Show me, well, thank you. If you're yes, yes, Listen, yes. If you're correcting, look, if you're correcting yourself now, uh, I have commented on what you said earlier on. Okay. If you are now saying something else, then okay. that's a different thing completely. So are you agreeing because that are you agreeing that if there's where there's a discrepancy, the the electronic results will be used? Are you agreeing to that having no, I'm saying to you that it's not obligatory that or mandatory. Sir, it is obligatory and I, mandatory according to law. Uh, it's here. Are you gonna listen to me? Yes, I'm listening to you, sir. Yeah, it shouldn't be a... You don't have to agree with my viewpoint. Even in a court of law, you have two uh, uh, opinions or several opinions before a judge. It is only a judge right. that will determine it. You okay. can disagree. You can choose to disagree with my own interpretation or my own reading. What seems to be very clear to me is when you read from section 60 up to 65, you will come to a conclusion that... If there is a dispute, the presiding officer will resolve the matter. And if, if, if the, the, the returning officer has the final say on accepting a result or not accepting so a is result, this section it is section 60, section 61, section 62, 63, 64, 64. I've read it. It's not there. What you're saying isn't known to law. I'm sorry, Mr. Show me. On how to resolve issues that it's not the presiding officer? It's on, on how to resolve I'm issues that it will not be done electronically. Biolu Shomi, thank you for I'm your time. I always, always enjoy talking to you, sir, and definitely will engage again. It's lovely to have your perspective and your point of view. Thank you so much, sir. All right, uh, we have a duty to, to inform the public and to tell them what the law says. And uh, I mean, if, if it's not in the law, then please feel free to correct me and correct us right here, plus TV Africa. But it's, it's there, black and white. Section 51 of the Guidelines and Regulations for the Conduct of Elections in Nigeria, and Section 93 as well. My name is Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow with more on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning.